Number 7. Astronaut Love Triangle In 2007, a love triangle between two astronauts and an Air Force captain became heated when one of the women involved was attacked in a parking lot. Colleen Shipman, a retired Air Force captain, was approached by a woman as she sat in her car at the Orlando International Airport. The stranger, who turned out to be astronaut Lisa Nowak, had just completed a 14-hour road trip from Houston. Lisa later confessed to police that she wore an adult diaper on the journey so she wouldn't have to stop to use the restroom. Colleen had recently started dating Lisa's ex-boyfriend, astronaut William Bill Ophelein, and she was jealous of their relationship. Lisa wanted Colleen out of the picture completely so she could get her man back. In the parking lot of the airport, Lisa sprayed Colleen with pepper spray, but Colleen managed to drive away. If Colleen hadn't escaped, she might have endured much worse than pepper spray. It turns out that Lisa had brought with her a variety of items that seemed to indicate that she planned to kidnap and possibly even kill her man's new lover. She had a four-inch knife, a steel mallet, and a BB gun in her possession. This would later seal Lisa's fate. She was charged with attempted murder and attempted kidnapping, but these would be reduced to misdemeanor battery and burglary instead. Lisa had built up the relationship she had with William in her mind. At the time she was seeing him, she was actually married to Richard Nowak, with whom she had three children. William and Lisa had an affair and saw each other for two years. But when William met Colleen in 2006, he ended things with Lisa. After being attacked, Colleen reported the incident to police and Lisa was arrested. She only spent two days in jail, but was sentenced to probation. In addition, she lost her spot in the space program and she received an other than honorable discharge from the Navy. It took nine years for Colleen to finally feel safe after the assault. She ended up retiring in 2008 in order to begin a new writing career. William and Colleen eventually got married and they had a son together. So in the end, it was a happy ending. Number six, Space Snake. Nothing can live in the vacuum of space, or can they? According to astronaut Story Musgrave, a Kentucky native, there are creatures that have the ability to survive in the seemingly uninhabitable environment. In an interview in 1995, Story explained that on multiple occasions, he's witnessed an unexplained phenomena in space. He claimed to have seen snakes slithering around out there, some of them measuring as long as eight feet. Story described the creatures to be rubbery and they had internal waves in them. Apparently, he's noticed the space snakes following his craft on two of his missions. Story says that the more you make trips into outer space, the more amazing things you'll see. On Earth, there's some incredible organisms that seem to thrive in places you'd never think possible. There are even organisms that can survive in the harsh environment underneath the ice caps in Antarctica. Even though technology and science has advanced so much in the last thousand years, things still seem to surprise and amaze us. Even today, nobody knows for sure what kind of creatures could be living in our universe. When Story was asked what he thought could exist out in deeper space, he replied, living creatures far more developed as civilizations. Number 5. Houston, I have the farts. In 1972, an astronaut from the Apollo 16 mission to the moon had a rather embarrassing experience while communicating with ground control. John Young and Charlie Duke, the lunar module pilot, were going about their work on the satellite during the 12-day mission when a private conversation between the two men accidentally got broadcasted to NASA's public channel. Young apparently was having some stomach issues from the fruit he was forced to eat while in space and he was venting about his uncontrollable gas to his colleague. In the recorded message, Young can be heard saying, I have the farts again. I got them again, Charlie. He then goes on to say that he hasn't eaten so much citrus fruit in more than 20 years, and he explains that once the mission is over, he'll never eat it again. Apparently, the astronaut's diet includes a large amount of citrus fruit due to complaints from previous astronauts about irregular heartbeats in space. According to a NASA flight surgeon, this phenomena could have been caused by a potassium deficiency, and in order to avoid health problems, fortified fruit drinks loaded with orange juice were given to the astronauts. Number 4. Moon Trash It comes as no surprise that over the years, many places on Earth have been covered in trash. But did you know that junk isn't Earth-specific? 
Apparently, the moon is also full of trash left behind by astronauts who have made the journey to the celestial body. But what kind of things could possibly be littering the surface of the moon? Surprisingly, there's a lot. A whopping 96 bags of human excrement have been left on the celestial body by many astronauts. However, there are plans in place that will bring this garbage back to Earth so that scientists can study how the waste was affected by its time on the moon. But at the moment, these bags of poop still remain on the surface of the satellite. Charles Duke, an astronaut present on the Apollo 16 mission, left a framed photograph of his family on the moon. Written on the picture, it says, This is the family of astronaut Charlie Duke from planet Earth. Duke landed on the satellite on April 20th, 1972, and he was the youngest astronaut to ever set foot on the celestial body. You might think that the family portrait has remained undamaged in space, but it's more likely that it's been entirely bleached by the intense radiation from the sun. As you may already know, there's flags on the moon, the most noticeable of which is the American flag that was planted in 1969 by Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, the first men to walk on the satellite. However, it's not common knowledge that there are also human remains that now call the moon home. U.S. geologist Gene Shoemaker studied terrestrial craters, and he even discovered multiple planets and comets in his time. When Gene passed away in 1997, he was immortalized for all of eternity when his ashes were placed in a capsule and taken to the moon by the Lunar Prospector space probe. Gene is currently the only man to have their ashes on the satellite, and if you think about it, he's basically the first person to have a permanent residence on the moon. You might be surprised to know that there's also a small art gallery set up on the celestial body called the Moon Museum. It consists of a small ceramic wafer that only measures three quarters of an inch in size, and it was created by American sculptor Forrest Myers. On the microchip, you can find tiny artworks completed by six famous artists, David Novros, Klaus Oldenburg, and Andy Warhol. Forrest actually snuck the art onto the moon when he went over NASA's head and convinced an Apollo 12 engineer to transport it to the satellite. It was secretly attached to one of the legs of the lunar module, and it allegedly still remains on the moon to this day. However, NASA has neither confirmed or denied this. Interestingly, there's also several memorials that have been placed on the satellite by various astronauts over the years. Aldrin and Armstrong left a mission patch from Apollo 1 on the moon in order to commemorate their fellow astronauts who lost their lives during a flight test in 1967. Alan Bean from Apollo 12 also left a golden olive branch on the celestial body as a tribute to astronaut Clifton C. Williams, who was a pilot for NASA that died in a plane crash due to mechanical issues while flying a T-38 jet trainer. There's so much more that can be found on the surface of the moon, and in the future, even more artifacts and space junk will likely be added to the collection. What piece of American history do you think should be added to the moon? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 3 Who's knocking? It's impossible for sound to travel through space, but in 2003, Chinese astronaut Yang Li Hui claimed to have heard a mysterious knocking on the outside of his spaceship while he was in Earth's orbit. Li Wei was China's first ever man in space, and the incident happened on his maiden flight. He compared the sound to an iron bucket being struck with a wooden hammer. He said that he couldn't identify the origins of the knocking. Of course, he was alone when this happened, so he's the only one that can truly explain the event. It seems as though people have the strangest experiences when they are the only one to witness them. When Li Wei heard the noise, he was understandably nervous. What could possibly be making a sound in space? He decided to take a peek outside the ship's porthole, but he still couldn't find a source of the eerie sound. Space is supposed to be silent, but for some odd reason, the astronaut clearly heard something while he was in orbit. To this day, nobody has been able to explain what happened that day. The story has gained quite a bit of attention from the media, as well as conspiracy theorists. According to Professor Go Sher Hyang from the National University of Singapore, in order for noise to travel in space, there has to be a medium for it to pass through, whether that's water molecules, air particles, solid atoms, or metal. For example, the loud boom of thunder has to travel through the air before it reaches the ears of anyone who wants to hear it. Yang's only explanation for the mysterious knocking in space is that there could have been something striking the outside of the spaceship, but this is all speculation. Li Wei's colleague, 
Wee Sang So, however, gave another possible answer to the noise. He suggested that the sound might have been the result of contraction or expansion of the ship, possibly due to the temperature of the craft changing in orbit. Apparently, the same knocking was heard by subsequent astronauts on missions in 2005 and 2008. So until proven otherwise, the noise has been deemed a normal phenomenon. Number 2. Moon Olympics Charlie Duke, an astronaut from the Apollo 16 mission, almost lost his life when he decided to horse around on the moon in 1972. During the 10th visit to the moon by NASA astronauts, some fun activities almost turned deadly. Duke and the commander of the mission, John Young, decided to have their own Moon Olympics since the actual Olympics were set to take place that year in Munich. However, neither of the men had ever practiced high jumping in their spacesuits before. The two of them took turns jumping as high as they could on the moon, as they weighed significantly less due to the lower force of gravity on the satellite. Then as Duke was landing from one of his jumps, he lost his footing. This mistake could have proved fatal since even the smallest injury to his backpack could have destroyed all of his life support systems. In his own words, if it broke, I was dead. He tried to avoid landing on his back and he skillfully rolled to the right in order to break his fall. But this didn't go according to plan and he bounced on the surface of the moon and landed directly on his backpack. His heart was pounding as he laid on the ground, waiting for something to happen. But luckily, nothing did. Duke's commander, Young, looked over at him and said, That wasn't very smart, Charlie. Duke's only response was, Help me up, John. And then there was an uncomfortable silence between the two men, as things very easily could have gone much worse. After the close encounter, Duke said he learned his lesson, and he never participated in the Moon Olympics ever again. Number 1. Spacesuit Leak In March of 2022, Matthias Maurer from the European Space Agency was just about to finish a seven-hour-long spacewalk on the outside of the International Space Station when he began to feel water leaking into his spacesuit's helmet. This situation must have been terrifying, as he would have been the first person to ever drown in space. Luckily, he was saved by fellow astronaut Kayla Barron, who was present during the incident. But this isn't the first time something like this has happened. In 2013, an Italian astronaut named Luca Parmitano had a similar experience. Parmitano was also on a spacewalk when he noticed water pouring into the helmet of his suit. Initially, NASA didn't believe it was a problem, and he had to tell Mission Control three times that the liquid was not from his drinking bag. In this case, things were a lot more dire, and Parmitano was just minutes away from death. On his first call to Mission Control, he explained that he felt a lot of water hitting the back of his head. When he wasn't getting any solutions to the problem, he called again and reported that the liquid was increasing. And during his last communication with NASA, he told them that the issue definitely was not caused by a leaky drinking bag. A whopping 23 minutes after the issue was reported, Parmitano was finally told to terminate the spacewalk. By this time, water had begun to pool into his eyes, forcing him to blindly feel his way back into the airlock. Which of these astronaut stories surprised you the most? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!